June Olorenshaw is no stranger to tragedy. In 1977, she lost both of her daughters in the Granville train disaster, an accident that killed over 80 people and left Australia stunned with grief. I sat down with June and talked with her about life, love, and the lessons that grief can teach us. What prompted you to write your life's story? I didn't really sit down to write the book. I just started, I retired from work and after being so busy and having worked for almost 50 years, I started taking notes of everything that came into my mind from my life. And then the thing that was in the back of my mind was a statement that a doctor, a GP, Dr Christie had made when I was 30 years old, that my daughter was diagnosed with incurable cancer. And um, I'd had a, a rough life up till then. And I remember him saying, June, you should write a book. Your life story makes the story of Anne Frank look like a fairy tale. And I hadn't read it, um, Frank, at that time, and so I got out and eventually and brought the book, and and uh, that stayed in my mind. And I think that is how Dr. Christie's statement probably got the book started. Anyway. And so there've been many instances where death has touched your life. We see that when we read the book. So what, if anything, have you learned about the nature of life and death? The, the life is, is, has to be lived, you know, we just can't waste a day, we can't waste a moment. If we get a chance to go for a coffee or go overseas, whatever, just go and do it. Uh, because uh, we don't know, we don't know how long we've got, you know, my girls were alive one moment and then, then they were just gone the next day, that day, and um, uh, I, my attitude changed. I travelled the world, I, um, I can't say I had a lot of fun, but, I, but I, I really, if someone asked me to do something, I had a policy that I just didn't think about whether I could do it or whether I could afford to do it, I just said, yes, I'll do it. And that got me through and changed my my way of thinking, but life and death is, is um, death, death just come so quickly that it's, um, I just lost my little dog and, um, and that's really knocked me really hard. And he's in the book and um, I had him for over 10 years and yes, and that's, um, I'm having trouble coping with that at the moment. And from reading your book it seems that so much of your life has been a, such a struggle. Do you feel that it has been a struggle for you? It has been a horrific struggle. Every day is a struggle. Now, as I've got older, um, the struggle's got harder. Yes, it's just a struggle to get from day to day. And that's, um, and you have to hide that from the world because people don't want to um, meet a person that tells them they're, what they're going through or how they feel, so you get out there and put a smile on your face and make somebody else feel good or something. Yeah. And what's your fondest memory of your family? Of my girls? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so many. Um, probably when they were about four and five, because there's a lot in the book about the antics and... I think I, the purpose of the book was to bring out their personalities. They were so different and yet so close. They were sort of glued at the hip. But, um, yes, they were so so different. And that's what I've done in the book, I hope, is, is show them um, the princess and... Um, the Good Samaritan. 
you know, it's just two completely different. That's what I tried to bring out is the, and, and I didn't make them out to be um, perfect because they weren't. They were normal kids, and and that, that's what, and what I wanted to. I, I just wanted to introduce the girls to the world. I think. Mm. Do you feel that writing the, this story and writing their story helps to to keep their memory alive in some way? Oh, their memory lives with me every day. Mm. Mm. Um, I hadn't thought about that, but yes, it, it, it does, I guess, because people, would, friends would prefer that we don't talk about that, you might get upset, you know what I mean? So, and, and, and um, yes, it's, um, I guess it does. Mm. What do you believe is your biggest accomplishment in life? Oh, just keeping on going. Um, I could say the book, but it's probably not the biggest, but it may be. <laughs> it may be. It's, um, it's had four stars. It's had been incredibly well received. And um, biggest accomplishment, the biggest accomplishment is just... Um, mm -hmm to keep going, keep living and, and and never to be bitter. I never wanted to be bitter. I always prayed that I would be a better person, not a bitter person. It's always been my little swan song to myself. Yeah. Is there anything left that you'd like to accomplish in life? Anything more? Oh dear, I'm coming to the end of my days. <laughs> Maybe another book. Maybe a book that um, tells everyone of my of other people's reaction to the book. The reaction to the book has been varied and in, and incredible. Ninety nine percent, if not a hundred percent, positive. Um, yes, people. Um, it's touched so many people that ring me and say, I, I had to pick up my child and hug it more today. Or, you know, it's just, um, mm, that, might, that might be, maybe one. <laughs> well, what do you want people to take away with them when they read your book? Oh, take away with them? Um, yes. To not hold any resentment against anyone. It's a waste of energy. You know, if you have something to say, you say it and don't be resentful. Um, and live every day, take away from the, with the book. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of lessons to be learned. I'm feel, unfortunately, it's, it's not a healing book. And I, I had a lady come to me at New Farm and she had just recently lost her daughter and she said, I have to ask you, did what it, does it get any easier? And I said, I'm sorry, but no, it doesn't get any easier. And she said, well, I'm glad you said that. And I said, really? She said, yes, because people tell me it'll get easier and I know it won't. And I said, no, it doesn't get any easier. Hmm. Has your outlook on life changed? Oh, yes. Tremendously. I guess I was always the princess. I was brought up to believe that I was special. <laughs> I wasn't really, was I? But, oh, yes, I was brought up to believe I was special. And um, I, I did learn from someone that I wasn't special. Uh, and um, my outlook on life... Um, yes, uh, I'm a different person, completely different, stronger, extremely strong. Um, and I believe you have to, you, if you don't get strong, you, get, you go under. And, um, yeah.